So if you were trying to catch a fugitive on the lamb, yeah, what would you do? Uh, hookers, blow, maybe <laughs> some other some, something else that that something. they would love. Yeah, there you go. Cat catnip to fugitives. Catnip right? to fugitives, right? Well, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how how one fugitive got lured in in uh, Florida. Oh wow, cool. So, uh, question for you: mm-hmm. um, What's the worst thing that you would want to find on your doorstep? Oh. Um, I guess flaming bag of poop. Ooh, yeah, I mean, that'd be bad. Well, I mean, you know, some Floridians found some really awful things out happening on their doorstep using their ring doorbell. So we'll have to learn more about that. Okay, fair point, fair point. Okay, so here's one for you. You ever hear of Sleeping Beauty? Yeah. Great, right? great, great fairy tale. Happy ending, right? right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you ever fall asleep in front of people? Not as not as many th- times as I'd wanted to admit. I mean, yeah, I fall asleep definitely in, in a in, classroom in front of thousands. Uh, no. All right, so we're going to talk about a Sleeping Beauty in Florida, but the story has a happy ending. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. great. Well, well, it sounds like we got a lot of cool, great stories that we can talk about on this week's Florida Freak Show. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Ladies and gents, boys and girls, step right up for the Florida Freak Show. Thanks for listening again. I'm Corey O'Donnell. And I'm Kirsten O'Donnell, and today we're going to share some freaky Florida news stories for you, once again, ripped from the headlines. That's right, episode two, uh, we're continuing with a lot of bad press that's happening in the Sunshine State from COVID, uh, especially with them opening, deciding to open up the beaches again. Kirsten, do you have any stories about that? Yeah, so um, as a lot of people know, Jacksonville area kind of came under fire over the weekend because uh, the governor's decision to open up the beaches... And this actually, it was in local media, but I have uh, the story from the Hackensack Daily Voice. Oh, the Hackensack Daily Voice. Mostly because I like to say Hackensack. Yeah. The Jacksonville Beach reopenings disturbed those who said it was way too early to allow such a move and worse, that it would attract hordes of people from far and wide. Right. Jacksonville officials reopened the beaches only for recreational use, so swimming, surfing, walking, running, right. not for things like sunbathing, sitting, laying around with your cooler. <laughs> well, one tourist who apparently didn't know that loitering wasn't recreational enough turned out to be wanted on homicide charges what? out of Pennsylvania. Wow. So a three-month manhunt ended Sunday with the arrest of Mario Matthew Gotti, who had been on the lam since January. Is Essentially, Jacksonville Beach Police were patrolling the beach early Sunday to make sure people were following the rules and found Gaddy just kind of loitering near the dunes, wearing his American flag surfer shorts. Well, that'll uh, do it. And now he's pending extradition. Oh, wow. So so let me get this straight. So you're coming from so many states away, and you can't find anything else that you'd rather do. Let's go all the way down to Florida and go to, and hit the beaches. Right. Yeah. We're on a nationwide shutdown. This should be like the easiest time in the world to be able to hide from the police. Yeah. But you have nowhere. I, I, you can everybody's hiding. Down, right. I, everybody's hunkering down, taking sheltering in place. I know that, you know, a lot of criminals, you know, they get restless and they want to do something. But I, it seems like a, kind of a, a, a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, very, very strange. And and also, I'd like to point out in this story, not all of these people in these stories are really Floridians. Right. I, Florida gets a bad rap in yeah. the news, really bad rap. But I mean, they. I, I think sometimes these stories come to Florida rather right. than Florida producing them. We import a lot of weirdos just as much <laughs> as we have weirdos. I mean, I, I, maybe, maybe it's, maybe the heart wants what it, you know, or, or people want to like come here because weird is so easy to deal with, but uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, we definitely attract just as many weirdos from out of state or out of the country as we do here, like homegrown. Homegrown weirdos, right. absolutely. So, so I thought the beach thing was interesting because um, you know we've talked a lot about recreational use and and. You know, it's okay to go for a walk in your neighborhood, but maybe not congregating at the beach is a good thing. Here in our part of Florida, Southwest Florida, we drove past a golf course the other day and it was pretty crowded. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Incredibly crowded. And uh, I also also have to think that with these beaches having these shorter time spans, I kind of understand what they're trying to do with that whole thing. But 
I feel like that's even making it, you know, it's like, well, I got to get there, you know, I got to get there and <laughs> I got to get my three hours, you know, while I can. Yeah, absolutely. So um, apparently if, if you're on the lam, if you're a fugitive, when we're in the midst of a national lockdown, I guess the moral to the story here is just stay locked down. Yeah, or not go to something that just recently was reopened. There's a chance that there might be a stronger police presence there. You, it's hard to say. <laughs> you just don't know. Who knows for sure? But I know that if they're only going to open the beaches for a few hours, there's a good chance that uh, sheriff's deputies are going to be like patrolling to make sure that people aren't staying longer. Right. And and honestly, there's nothing else going on for them to patrol. But maybe it's the thrill of the chase. You know, maybe it's like, yeah, I'm going to go to the beach and I'm, I'm going to, you know, take my chances and, and rock this, my American flag shorts. This feels it just like robbing a bank. This feels just like doing anything that I can. Yeah, exactly. So it's the thrill, I think. Probably. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The so, thrill of Florida, man. <laughs> so from the other side of Florida, our next story comes. Um, this is from the Tech Times, though not 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 a huge techie story, but it has some technical elements oh, okay, to it. Yeah. So a Port Ritchie couple was on a drive recently when their ring doorbell alerted them to unexpected visitors outside their residence. Right. Ring doorbells being the brand name of a doorbell that has video. Right. Video sharing. doorbell. Yep. Absolutely. So the couple, of course, thought that their home was being burgled. They hop on their phone. They open up their app. They take a look and they see three guys on the front porch just creeping up to the front door. So they freaked out, assuming well, yeah. that some strangers were breaking into their home right? right right this sounds like every other story that you hear like where a, a you know a couple of guys just show up you know unannounced you know it could be like wrong wrong place something to that effect you know it's hard to say but three people i mean that's gonna be a little scary right so one of the men gets close to the door right sees the ring doorbell ah. explains through the camera we're not trying to steal anything there's an alligator at your front door and we're trying to catch it <laughs> <laughs> he disappears from view for a little while and then a few seconds later you hear a little scuffling yeah. and then he's embracing hugging he's getting in like a bear bear hug a i don't know three foot three four foot alligator not a huge one little so, guy but but you know still teeth uh it snags it and and they walk away how like are these the authorities like how did how did they pull this off I, he was in cargo shorts and a tank top i watched the well, video yeah. so not particularly official looking right i mean i i guess as official as i mean honestly it's florida i mean tank top and cargo shorts can mean any you know group of <laughs> it's hard to say yeah the sheriff half the time is you know i mean it's hot out there <laughs> you gotta be you, you gotta you gotta be careful, especially in the Everglades. I mean, it should be part of the uniform. Now we don't we don't have a do ring doorbell. Don't rob our house. Yes. Um, but I know a lot of people who do, and they're they're big fans. I don't know if you've heard any good ring doorbell stories. No, I mean ones that I've seen before are usually like you know drunken three in the morning type things where people are knocking on the wrong house and uh and things get really really out of control and it's you're you're constantly hearing the person from inside or possibly you know not there calling in saying hey you got the wrong house wrong man. house buddy you know, there's nobody here by that name um it's you yeah it's usually a case of mistaken identity but um i do i think my my favorite move with the uh the ring doorbell cohorts is always when they really get their eyeballs close to the to the camera itself, <laughs> as if as if the more they look into it, the, you know, the more they're actually going to be able to see. Oh, there's an actual camera on the other end of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of my favorites, uh, a former coworker of mine, had a ring doorbell, and she's in her office, and at my office was right next to hers, and I hear her go, "Somebody is talking crap about my decorations," and I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" She said. I, I just got a thing on my ring doorbell saying yeah. someone was at my door. She opened up the app and these people were talking smack about her 4th of July, her Independence Day, her celebration of America. Yeah. On her uh, on her front door because it was like July 6th and they were still up. So they were they were talking a little smack about it. Wow. So that's a cautionary tale out there for all of you. Like, you know, sometimes we like to make fun of things when we walk past them or or and think that there's nobody within earshot. Hey, 
Look big out for brother. those. Yeah, big brother could be ratting you out by sending an email to the owner, and they find out what's wrong with my stuff. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with my stuff. Yeah. A- actually, these neighbors were a pretty good source of entertainment for us for a while. She lived in an apartment complex, and uh, they came home drunk a lot, and, oh. and so we, we got to see a lot well, of fun antics. Endless. That's great. All right. So uh, we had one story already from the Jacksonville area. How about one more from sure. Northeast Florida? Yeah. Just just for fun. Jacksonville is really winning this week. And this actually isn't Jacksonville. It's... um. It is Barden, Florida, which is kind of halfway between St. Augustine and Gainesville. Okay. But but Jacksonville area, yeah. right? Yeah, Treasure Coast, Space Coast type area. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. North north of Space... North of there, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Northeast Florida. Yes, Northeast <laughs> Florida. So, Putnam County Sheriff's Department deputies arrived at a home. This, by the way, from Jacksonville.com. Uh, arrived at a home in Barden, Florida, to arrest 28-year-old Joshua Price on a warrant for fleeing and eluding law enforcement. Wow. So they get to the house, and there is a handwritten sign crudely taped to the front door with electrical tape. Oh, perfect. Scrawled on a piece of notebook paper, it says, COVID-19 infected since April 8th, 2020. Well, I mean, that's going to work every time. So, yes, the sheriff's office posted the photo on their Facebook page saying, placing a fake COVID-19 sign on your door will not stop us from kicking it in when you have felony warrants for your arrest. Uh, They simply just put on some protective gear, kicked the door down, and hauled in Mr. Price. (laughs) Well, that's good. I mean, at least there's a happy ending to this whole story. I mean, because it is bad to hear people, you know, using, you know, this pandemic that we're going through, you know, to to possibly get away with something. But I mean, maybe go to the to to a greater length of maybe printing it out, maybe using like a different kind of tape so that it looks a bit more official. I don't know. Maybe maybe snag the health department logo on and and, a little copy paste there. That's the kind of thinking that just doesn't happen with Florida men and women. I, I guess not. I no. guess not. But you know what? I mean, this guy's got to be a fairly wily criminal because it, his original charge was fleeing and eluding law enforcement. Yeah. So you would you would think that maybe you know, dig back into your bag of tricks of other ways that you can elude police. Right. Yeah. I mean, this this putting a sign on the door is like the equivalent of you know having the police call you and you answer the phone and say, "Oh no, sorry, I'm not here right now." <laughs> yeah. It's just I don't know. And and honestly, it, it's so funny. You know, with so many people going through this sort of uh, pandemic and you know going to stores. Everybody's wearing a mask. It's like I feel like everyone is, you know, a potential bandit. And I, <laughs> there's a, and there's and to me it seems like well it'd be even easier for a criminal to actually get in there and actually because it's like well I'm already like wearing the mask. That's usually the dead giveaway that there's going to be something that wrong that's happening. But instead, it's like nobody's really doing any of that, which is really great. It is great. Yeah. It is great. Now, um. In in looking up some information on this story yeah. and about and and about Barden, Florida, have you ever heard of the Barden Booger? No, I'm not. You're not is, familiar. Is it a restaurant? <laughs> you did say burger and not booger. No, I I said bo- booger. Okay, booger, booger with the um, long O. Yeah. So, um. Apparently, Barden is no stranger to Florida freakitude. Oh, okay. Um, the Barden booger is apparently a a cousin to Bigfoot, or as or as we would say here in Florida, the uh, skunk ape. Oh. So Barden has its own skunk ape. Love the skunk ape. Named the Barden booger. Ah, okay. Who has apparently been spotted around the area, yeah. though no casts or photos have ever been taken. Interesting. Let's go back real, sec- real, real for just a moment here, and let's talk about branding for a second. <laughs> now, I know that a lot of times these stories um, have uh, perpetuated themselves from a long time ago, and sometimes they use words. Um, it's, it's always interesting to, to find out how you know certain like legends get their name the skunk Uh, ape apparently smells terrible right and that's 
the origin it, yeah, there. Yeah, it, it kind of feels like it, it tells you everything that you need to know right there in the name, Skunk Ape. Probably one of the reasons why I like it. I think it's great branding. Big, big smelly monkey man. Yeah. Barton Booger. The Booger apparently is short for Boogeyman. Oh. Or Booger Man. So and it just, just kind of, it's it's kind of like when your name is Margaret, but somehow your nickname ends up being Peggy because you kind of go Margaret to Meg, Meg to Peg, Peg to Peggy. Oh, okay. Except in this case, we went from Boogeyman to Booger Man to just Booger. Yeah. Or maybe there was a trademark infringement on oh. Boogeyman. Maybe they tried to go boogity, with boogity, boogity. Boogeyman. And then NASCAR, they were like, probably. Hey, you can't be using that. That's our thing. All right. Well, we'll just go with Booger then. I, it's hard to say. Like I'm not in those meetings, those <laughs> those smoke filled meetings that where they're making these decisions. Who All are I'm, the ad wizards who came up with this one? I'm just wondering sometimes, like where these names come from, and and a lot of times it's usually some antiquated, like you know, colloquialism that I'm just not familiar with. So, but Barton Booger, yeah, it's alliterative, but other than that, uh, you got to give them that. Yeah, alliteration is yeah. one of the best devices that one can you'll never forget the barton booger and as a former newspaper man i'm sure that it probably came came from the local you know the local rag i'm i'm sure that's probably what ended up happening and that's where the name comes from it just feels so florida i guess yeah very yeah. florida very yeah. florida so a few of the stories we've talked about today have have related very directly to this whole COVID-19 situation. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I've, I've been trying in this podcast not to dwell on the COVID-19 thing right. because I think we all need stuff to laugh about right now and don't want to think about it. Absolutely. That said, it lends itself to some weirdness. Absolutely. Like we, we can't, yeah, we can't deny the fact that there's a lot of weird things that are probably going on and a lot of things that we probably won't hear about, you know, ever or maybe until further down the line because it's just fewer and fewer fewer people are actually like making contact with one another so we're finding out about all these things sort of once it's like you know a police report or something to like that right you know? so, so another way that we sometimes find out about things is just through video for example right. and and so many of us right now are trying to find ways to do our jobs through telecommuting absolutely Zoom is taking off in a big way. Everybody's mm -hmm. working from home. Everyone's using their webcams. You know, we're all trying to make sure that people realize we're not wearing pants. <laughs> did so. you? And this is not one of our stories, but did you see the article? I believe it was in. Um, it was either in Broward or Miami Dade County. Mm. Um, attorneys were showing up for hearings via Zoom, and some of them were showing up still lying in bed. Oh. Some were shortless, oh. shirtless, not Ooh. shortless, shirtless, okay. maybe shortless. Hey. I don't know. Shirtless better than shortless. To the point where the judge actually had to send out an, an edict essentially saying, hey, you know, it's still a court trial. Maybe you should dress appropriately. Yeah. I mean, far be it for me to like say like I, I haven't been the, you know, the best person to like, you know, ask about these sorts of things, but. Yeah, the whole business on top, party on bottom thing probably <laughs> isn't going to work as well for the legal system. So attorneys, schlubs like you and I yes. are not the only ones who are having to find ways to do our jobs virtually and having to telecommute. And really, when you think about it, new avenues and new channels to are, you know, right. th these are all being discovered now, like ways that we're doing things and and who would have thought, you know, that we could actually do a lot of this work from home? So another person doing yeah. a lot of work from home. Right. Anahi Santos, who is a drag queen. Well, that's perfect. Absolutely. I mean, why, why, that's, that's a great way to, you know, why couldn't you telecommute as, if you're a drag queen? Absolutely. So this story from MSN.com. A drag queen have gained hundreds of new fans after she fell asleep for three hours during a live stream. Okay. Anahi Santos is based in Palm Beach Gardens and started off her Facebook Live with a lip sync performance as uh, she gulped down what looked to be a very large screwdriver. <laughs> Good uh, choice. En Espanol, she told her viewers that she was a little drunk and was about to start her second song. Yep. But then after a few minutes, she pulled up a lawn chair on her lanai, sat down, and dozed off. That's the... 
death knell right there. <laughs> and this S- sitting down in a lawn chair on your lanai. I mean, you're going to be out in a moment. Right. And this was no cat nap. She fell asleep on and off over the course of the three hour Facebook live wow. with her eyes shut for a solid hour at one point. Video rolling the whole time. Video rolling the whole time. Of course, it went viral. Yep. Folks across the world sharing the video, including some fairly famous drag queens from from Ireland and some other countries. <laughs> nice. Uh, International. The, yes, the video has more than 71,000 views. Anahi woke up on Sunday to hundreds of new fans on her page and actually a lot of tips on her PayPal as well. Nice. Because people just kind of, I, I think, maybe felt a little sorry for her and, and threw her a couple of bucks. The best of intentions were there. Absolutely. You know, especially like, you know, reaching out with a new venture, you know, you know, and, and using like a Venmo in order to, to get tips. That's tough. I mean, it, it's it's a tough racket out there for anyone just trying to make money, you know, even in person. So trying to do it over live over, over the Internet, I mean, it is enough to make you, you know, knock you out. Uh, absolutely. So in, in true Florida fashion, of course, she embraced the infamy. Right. And uh, on the next morning, posted on her Facebook that it was the best night of her life. Awesome. If nothing else, she got a great night's sleep. Yeah. It, it's great. I mean, I, I think I, I this is a great lesson for all of us that, you know, we could turn lemons into lemonade anytime we need to. You know, falling asleep with a, with a running live stream, you know, and, and all the comments and, and stuff that come after the fact, that's, you know, it's... It's a wonderful tale for us all. Now, did you watch any of this video? I watched a little bit of it. I, and I, you know, truth be told. Um, and I mean, can I just mention really like the creepiest thing that I noticed from the video? Yes. Probably what I found the most creepy is obviously when, when, uh, when she fell asleep and her, she was sort of nodding back and forth with her head and every once in a while, her eyes would open up, and she has these massive fake eye eyelashes mm-hmm. on, and it was just so disturbing, <laughs> you know, because she was just coming in and out of sleep, like she obviously wasn't into REM or anything like that, so she was coming in and out, and it just had this feeling of um, of someone who was almost drugged, yeah. and it was just like, I, uh, you know, it's like I'm starting to drift off, and but whatever. And I just, I don't know, the the eyelashes like really accentuated <laughs> just how creepy it was. So. Yeah, um, it wasn't, it was not pretty. No. It was not pretty. She she kind she of fell asleep. She looked fantastic though. She really well, at, sleeps nicely. At the beginning, she yeah. looked fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, she would wake up and, you know, when you wake up, sometimes you're, you're you know, you kind of rub your face. That's so all those things you're not supposed to do when there's, you know, a pandemic. Oh, yeah. But, you know, at one point she rips off her eyelashes half asleep. Another oh, point the wig comes off. I didn't make it that far. By the end, it was, it was not pretty. And, and then at the end, um, the the best part is the porch light flips out and you see a, a guy, her roommate, partner, whoever, kind of come out and moves the camera away and kind of cleans up the lanai and oh that's yeah nice. it was sweet it yeah. was very sweet yeah really camera still rolling for, yeah of course well it's like <laughs> I, you can't be you can't be you know it can't be easy to like know like where to you know and it always looks bad when you're like trying to turn it off or whatever but that's still nice. It's yeah. nice, nice to have good friends like that. Yeah. So I guess uh, quarantine is a real drag. Oh, that's like the first bad pun of the night. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's good that it came on the last story. It, it really did. Um, By the way, if you want to find this video, it's a little tough to find on Facebook. But if you go to YouTube and type in Sleeping Drag Queen or Anahi Santos, you will find it. You will... You can find condensed versions or you can find the full three hour stream. So if, if, and we all have plenty of time to kill right now. What's great about this, you know, just being a football fan is a lot of times you don't want to watch the full game because you don't want to have to deal with all the stuff in between. <laughs> so it's nice that people have made condensed versions for us, you know, for all of us that, you know, have short attention spans or have so much going on during this pandemic that we can't, you know, make it through the entire video. That's just the internet for you. They always make things a little bit easier. It's so true. Yeah. It's so true. It's it's like the, the Cliff's Notes of... Do kids today know what Cliff's Notes are? I don't even know. Probably like, not. No. Email us if you've ever heard of Cliff's Notes. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff's Notes. So, so what have we learned today, Corey? 
Well, we've learned that uh, if you're a fugitive, maybe don't head for the beach and definitely don't do it if it's like so many states away. Like try to find something maybe a little closer to home or... You well, know. but yet, you know, if you're fleeing the law... That's true, but I guess it's just one of those things where don't decide to go someplace that's opening for the first time in like a month and a half. You know, it, it could prove problematic. Yeah, I, I yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Gators not good um not welcome guest at your home. I mean unless and, unless it's like Tim Tebow. Yeah, oh yeah. I'd love to have him over. <laughs> I I don't even think of myself as like a big Florida Gators fan, but yeah, I would definitely have Tim Tebow over for some some tea and Like if you looked on your ring doorbell and Tim Tebow standing that there. That would be great. Come on in, Tim. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not not a, a reptile that is uh, going to like you know eat me alive. That's not good. No, not good. Not welcome. I mean, it's just you know, know your place, Gator. Right. And you if know. the cops are on your doorstep, yeah, you know, maybe maybe having a more professional looking sign. Oh, definitely, absolutely, yeah. Um, or or just maybe coming up with a, a better idea. For how to get how to what like a sign that says nobody's home. Oh yeah, that's much better. <laughs> yeah, I'm not here right now. Yeah, and if you're gonna fall asleep in front of a uh, of a live stream, make sure you've got all your drag makeup on. Well, and what I was gonna say is make sure you have your PayPal account address. Oh yes, on the live stream so people can tip you. Just a really smart thing to do anyway. I mean, we're seeing it more with cash apps. Like, just just hey, who knows. You know, people will maybe just do it just, you know, just just to be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Money to blow. This is great. We've learned so many awesome things from Florida men and women this week. We as really we do have. every week. As we do. It's one of the reasons why we do this. It's a public service. It is. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, so those, I guess, were our freakiest Florida finds for this week. So yep. thanks again for joining us for another slice of Sunshine State Silliness. Yeah, absolutely. Remember to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. That's at FLA Freak Show. And of course, if you like this podcast, like, review, and subscribe on all of the different pod. You can get it on almost every podcast uh, service that you can find. Out We're getting there. there. We're getting there. Yeah, Stitcher. It, we just we just went live on you on uh, Apple. iTunes. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, and Spotify. We so fancy. We available everywhere. We fancy. so please rate, read, and review. I'm Corey O'Donnell. I'm Kirsten O'Donnell, and we will be back next week. So until then, let your Florida freak flag fly.